Hello, everyone. My name is Jan Clementidis, and I'm a genetic epidemiologist at the University of Arizona. I want to thank the organizers for the opportunity to present my research. My research is uh, similar to what I presented last year with a few slight updates. I have nothing to disclose. So my research in genetics is motivated by the fact that many of the traits and diseases that we care about are heritable. That is, that, um, that they're traits that are passed down um, in, in a family. Um, and so there's underlying genetic reasons why um, th these traits are heritable. And so for lipedema, there's pretty strong indications that lipedema is heritable by looking at family studies and by looking at more anecdotal um, um, cases in which it's very hard to lose lipedema fat um, through diet or exercise. So what I set out to do is to try to identify the specific genetic or genes that are causing lipedema. So we have this indication that it runs in families, so there's something heritable, something in our DNA is predisposing some individuals to lipedema and others not. And so I, my goal is to try to identify what those specific genes are. And uh, my hypothesis is that there's probably many, probably hundreds or thousands of genetic um, variants or variations in our genome that um, if you have a lot of those risk predisposing genes, then you're gonna be pushed more towards being susceptible to lipedema. And so um, fortunately, um, the UK Biobank um, is a great resource that recently emerged. Um, and this is a, a resource of uh, over 500,000 adults from the UK. And they were measured across many different um, traits, um, including questionnaire and um, me physical measurements. And specifically, they looked at, they measured waist and hip circumferences. And they also measured uh, body fat percentages in different parts of the body, so in the legs, the arms, and the trunk. And so I set out to use that information, that information on, on body, or, um, body size and body fat distribution to try to identify among these, what ends up to be about 250,000 women, about half are, are women, um, adult women, um, who, uh, who among those women is likely to have the lipedema phenotype? And so here I'm showing a plot of um, all the 250,000 women, adult women from the UK, who participated in the study, and showing you on the x-axis their, their waist circumference, and then on the y-axis their leg fat percentage. And you can see that there's kind of a, a, a bulge in the top left, so that there's you know a group of women who are who have a high proportion of leg fat for a given waist circumference. Or you can think about it also as a, a below the average waist circumference, but above the average leg fat percentage. So using various methods, I, I classified these into, into women who have lipedema or appear to have lipedema or a phenotype similar to lipedema and the rest of the women. And here I'm assuming about a 10% prevalence of lipedema. And so with that phenotype, so I have, basically I have women who have a one and women who have a zero. And I do an association with millions of genetic markers across the genome to find where in the genome, um, what, what area of the genome is showing the strongest evidence for an association with that zero versus one, lipedema versus no lipedema. And so this is called a Manhattan plot. On the x-axis is the location in, in the genome. And then on the y-axis is kind of a measure of the strength of association. And so wherever you see dots that are going above that red line, that's indicating a stronger association. And so we identified um, uh, nearly 20 loci or regions in the genome that show pretty strong associations. And um, 
thankfully and interestingly, a lot of these, or some of these, um, have previously been identified for uh, uh, genetics of waist to hip ratio. And as you can imagine, waist to hip ratio is a medically very important trait, and so there's been a lot of research on what are the genetics of how people distribute their fat on their body. And so, and, and, and interestingly, the, the genes that we identified, that we identified in this study, are genes for waist to hip ratio that are especially strong in women. So we're kind of, kind of finding these women-specific genes for fat distribution. Um, and then we're also identifying, uh, um, importantly here, we are adjusting for the hip circumference. So we're, we're, we're actually getting more information than just a waist to hip ratio measurement. Not only are we using leg fat percentage, but we're also um, adjusting for hip circumference. So we're not just looking at bigger hips necessarily. And then we also, also identified uh, new loci that have not previously been identified. And so from that information, so we've got a list of, of genes, and from that, inf from that list of genes, we can learn about what are the tissues that are likely to be implicated, what are the pathways that are likely to be implicated. And so that's kind of an ongoing process that's going to take a while, but we can see some enrichment if we look at um, uh, gene expression patterns, and this is using um, external reference data, we can see some enrichment of um, expression in the blood vessels as well as um, adipose tissue. Um, so here is another um, way of looking at it. So here I'm showing um, a list of genes that are expressed um, in different tissues um, that show some, these are genes that are, are implicated in lipedema according to my analysis. And so here we're, we're starting to get a picture of what are the genes that are potentially involved in lipedema, where are these genes acting, in what tissues, and you know, these are some potential areas where these, these genes might be acting. Um, and we can also learn about um, specific biological pathways that these genes are um, involved in, and so we've done uh, pathway analysis with a collaborator. Um, and so this is starting, starting to give us some insight into what um, you know, what are the pathways and mechanisms whereby genes cause lipedema? Uh, we've also um, collaborated, of course, since I'm at the University of Arizona with Dr. Herbst, um, and using um, tissue biopsies that she's obtained of women with lipedema and women without lipedema, and this is thigh fat biopsies. And we tried to kind of triangulate and see if the genes that we identified in, um, in the UK Biobank are differentially expressed in the, a separate data set of women with diagnosed lipedema. And we're starting to see some indication there of, of some overlap of these genes. Um, this is still preliminary, but look, it's looking promising. Uh, so what we really need to do is try to replicate and strengthen the evidence that these are really genes that are Im truly implicated in the lipedema. And so we're, we have several replication efforts on, under, ongoing uh, to try to just strengthen the evidence. Uh, one of which um, that with, in collaboration with Dr. Herbst is that we're trying to get um, people who have done 23andMe or Ancestry DNA to upload their genetic results. You can go to treat medicine.arizona.edu, and on the resources page at the bottom, there's a link where you can participate in a questionnaire and upload your raw genotype data that you can download from 23andMe. So if you've done, if you've done 23andMe, you can um, access that raw genotype data, your raw genotype data. treat.medicine.arizona.edu go to the resources page, and at the bottom of that resources page, there's um, a study for um, using genotype, your genotype data. So if we can just get, you know, a few hundred um, women with lipedema the, and, and, your, and your data, um, we'd be well on our way to strengthening the evidence of, of these genes. Um, so really quickly, 
what we want to do here is we want to identify genes that will tell us about the physiology and the biology and, and inform therapeutics, but I think also we can better predict an individual's risk. So I'd like to thank uh, my collaborators and uh, importantly the Lipedema Foundation for funding. Thank you very much. Thank you.